<laughs> this is literally live. Um, we are doing our best to get live to you tonight from whatever platform we can possibly go from. Uh, we were trying to just do exclusively Facebook, um, you know, for a good half an hour. And um, then we finally were like, got the, it's a Facebook outage message. And so then we're like, oh, well, maybe Facebook's having an issue. Um, and now we're like, I don't know. Anyway, just turn the, turn it right off. Is it that? We're getting like a ringing from somewhere. <sighs> like someone, oh, someone's calling. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Um, can you, there's a message, just one second. This is how, this is how chaotic it is. There's someone trying to call me on Facebook Messenger oh. and it's, it's, anyway, can you just write them back? Yeah. Just type it and, and say, um, there's been a delay. She'll have to call you later. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry. Hi, everybody. Welcome to <laughs> class one's uh, Q&A. We are live. And we have got uh, Janome Canada educator, um, hey, all, <laughs> expert in all things sewing, Amanda Brown. Thank you so much for sticking with us tonight. Sorry, it's been such a chaotic half hour. How it goes? <sighs> How goes the cutting, everybody? This is what we're here to talk about tonight. Have you been able to get your templates cut out? Even if you haven't cut any fabric, you could, you could cut out your little organizational templates. Um, that's always a good start. And I do see some people in the posts, um, um, you know, they've got their stuff all organized and Vanessa says she's all done. That's great. Hi, Selena. Yes. Doesn't Amanda's hair look wild and wonderful? <laughs> you said last year that you were going to keep it pink. And yeah. I was so curious because we haven't spoken in a while, um, to see if your hair was still going to be pink. Yes, very pink. And my mom informed me that this pink is not nice. Oh. <laughs> She's like, yeah. thanks, mom. <laughs> Sorry, mama. The mom is always just like cut right to it, don't they? They sure do. <laughs> I know. I remember getting lots of lots of messages from my mom sometimes while I was on the she'd see a news story that I was doing, like, so you got bangs. <laughs> <laughs> like that kind of thing. Uh, although you want to know what, when I was on the news, lots of people would write in all the time. Oh yeah. Like, tons of that nice feedback. Everyone has uh, opinions. What you were wearing, what your lipstick looked like, all that kind of stuff. So um, so I wanted to get to any cutting or organizing, uh, questions you guys had tonight. Um, are we brave enough, uh, Karen, to even put in the comments a link to bring anyone else up? <laughs> she's probably going oh, that's all don't mess now. with it um but hey throw it up why not um if you have a question please put it in the comments or um we will put a link in the comments here if you want to join amanda and i live also um just to make our technical night even more uh fun um yeah let's try it just try it sure. and then you can talk to us in person um so amanda you got your box right i did and, and it's beautiful. Everything's beautiful. And I watched your first little video for class one and you said to only wash the backgrounds and the backing and guess who washed it all. Okay. And it's now like, what color is what? Like it's getting sorted, <laughs> but it is, it is tricky because okay. there's so many colors. There's so many colors. And help me out with a little like question we've been having around here. How much did it shrink? How wide is your strip now? Well, it did fray a bit. Um, I haven't pressed it yet because that's my like, but it's still just over 10 inches. Oh, good. 10 and a quarter inches. So I think so I this have... is, this is great. There was not a lot of shrinkage because everybody got, you know, about 10 inches of that fabric. And I know um, some people had written earlier wondering, well, if I wash my um, background fabric and I don't wash my colorful fabric, am I going to have weird shrinkage? And my response was I was mostly washing it so that in case the fabric dye leaked, mm -hmm. that's my primary concern and why I'm washing the fabric. Good quality fabric like this, you don't see the same kind of shrinkage that you see in like big box store fabric. Am I, Yeah. is that been your experience, Amanda? 
Yeah, and the biggest concern is shrinkage, but then some of them completely shred. Like this one frayed a bit, um, but that's normal. Like that's a reasonable amount. Um, I've had some that I lose like two inches to fraying. And that's just how tightly woven it is. Um, like some solids are prone to uh, like shredding more than others. So it's mm -hmm. just knowing your fabrics. I know I knew Moda would be fine and we'll, we would be okay. And um, it's, it's worked out. But yeah, it's a lot of it is when you do wash it all together, the bright colors sometimes just run and you just don't know. Yeah. Um, but the background fabric, it should Did be you wash it all together? Wash Did you wash the colors with your white? No. 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 I've been burned by that too many times. <laughs> I so. washed my backing, the teal, with the white and it was fine. Oh. I know. Because I wanted You're to see what would happen. I sometimes try to like do the things that people might do. So I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have a, you know. But like I, I rarely ever have a problem, but it's just that once in a while, like this. Spring, I think I did a black and red and white quilt and the red definitely bled everywhere. And I yeah. used like color catchers. Is that me? Jen's no. gone. my brain feels sometimes. Can you hear me okay, Amanda? I can hear you. You're just really far away. I sound really far away. Maybe I'll move my mic up a little bit. There we go. Can you hear me a little bit better now? Am I less yes. far away? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's a real gong <laughs> show over here tonight. <laughs> Not enough. I'm changing the batteries as we speak. <laughs> Probably because we're blowing all the batteries once we start <laughs> this whole story. <laughs> we swear we've been here working away. Okay. Oh, yeah. All good? I make funny faces all the time. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, mm. uh, lots of people posting that they've received their batting. Um, I'm glad some people got th this kit has gone out in many, many, many ways. If you are someone who got all the things in your box at one time, buy a lottery ticket, okay? Because it's your <laughs> lucky day. <laughs> but, you know, if you don't have all your stuff, it's going to, like, filter in. So um, rest assured, we haven't forgotten about you. But if you're worried, just email info at homemade.ca. Um, okay, let's get oh, – we have a question here. Uh, Sarah. Um well, there's one just up right now. White thread in the kit says bobbin thread on the welcome card. Did you also use this for piecing? Yes. Uh, the white thread in the kit says bobbin? No. Now, there's white thread in the kit, and the navy is for the bobbin. Did we write it wrong? Anyway, whatever. Here's all, let me clarify. The white is for piecing and quilting. The navy is for the bobbin, but only when you're quilting. So you, you either you have navy or teal. If you're doing the daytime, I have a daytime version right there. And you will put that in the bobbin. Or the gray. The dark gray. Or the dark gray. You'll put that in your bobbin when, um, I can show you overhead here. When you're going to quilt, this is going to be on the bottom of your um, machine. And then you can use the teal thread here. I mean, you can use white too, but it's going to show up more. Sometimes Just make sure your quilt, your, your quilt's done the right way. Like yes. you don't want it to be flipped and then be like, wait, there's teal all over the, my white portion. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you can use white if you want. If you if your machine is acting up and you can start to see little bits of teal thread popping through, that means something's a little off. You're going to want to re-thread, but we're many weeks away from that point. Um, but the white thread is definitely definitely for piecing even your colorful fabric. You can piece with white. Um, you really won't notice it. People mostly piece with white. They don't they don't change it out. Yeah. Um, someone made a comment that someone behind the scenes sounds a lot like Jen. 
I got my sister Sarah behind the camera tonight. Yeah. Um, and if you have been following me since the day one. since day one, archaic times. Yes, you will. You might recognize that voice and the shenanigans. <laughs> so yes, I've got Sarah behind the camera tonight. No one makes fun of Jen quite as well as her younger sister. So you know, <laughs> I don't know. My son these days is really yeah, getting up there. <laughs> Um, um okay so one of the one of the questions was the colored pieces of the quilt that came were they a quarter yard each they are 10 inches each so it's not quite a quarter yard because four divided by 36 is six times four. Oh i'm not even God. trying no and, and so <laughs> anyway it's 10 inches <laughs> but there's one that's bigger right six times six is 36 so it would be like six I've, inches before this one's bigger yes that one needs to be bigger because you need more of that one because um it's in like some squares and in some of these a little more often it's so the, pretty the too. iris yeah the it's iris color yes you need a little bit more of that one i think it's the one that you need 60 uh 60 squares <sighs> um, this person just kind of going back to the question we were just discussing a minute ago about the, the black quilt, the dark gray thread versus the black thread. Yeah. So you want to use the darker thread in your bobbin, like the black one, the very, very dark uh, for your quilting. And then the gray, the grayish, like the dark gray um, that looks more gray and less black for your piecing for your piecing. But if you want to save that beautiful gray thread for something else, you can always piece with white. It's really not going to show. Um, but we sent gray because just in case. Um, plus, you can use it for your quilting. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> um, some people are commenting on uh, white spots or lines happening on some of the fabric. Did you oh. notice that, Amanda, when you washed yours or Jen, when you washed yours? No. Like no. on like like color removal, I think, is what it sounds mm. like. Well, it is kind of modeled. Like it's not, because it is an ombre, but there are like parts that were a little bit like whiter in random places. And I think that's okay. But um, my dryer puts brown marks on all my fabric. <laughs> it's just part of the quilt. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you're, they're getting white marks on their colored fabric or they're solid, like the gray. Um, this one. I'm not seeing it. I know one person earlier on Facebook had said it was um, on their background fabric. Let me see what the one is that somebody just posted on here. How often, we're getting a question here, how often do you change your, does Lori, oh, wait. Oh, me. We're going back and forth on all the, the uh, questions here. Let's just keep it moving and we, we can, and if you have a question, just post again. Let's just go to the, the, like the questions that we can put up and answer. Um, all right, let's see what Tracy's asking. Go ahead, Sarah. When cutting some of my layers of fabric, one end of my ruler shifted a tiny bit, less than an eighth of an inch. Should it be okay or would it be better to get new fabric? No, you should use that fabric. Do not get new fabric over an eighth of an inch for sure. However, when you put your corners together, you're going to see like probably when you have a white square or when you have one of your other colored squares that you didn't make this mistake with, you're going to see that that one, uh, if I'm showing you like overhead here, uh, that one, I'm just using this little ruler, that one's going to look perfect. And then when you put it on top, this one's going to have a little like, you know, yikes moment. Just make sure when you're sewing your quarter inch along that side, that it's kind of over far enough that there's no hole. And then you're going to just hide that little error right in your seams. Right, Amanda? Yes. Always in your seams. Like it works <laughs> out. And we still are going to trim up our pieces, right? Yeah. So a lot of that, like a small mistake here, an eighth of an inch is going to, you're going to trim it off anyway. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Don't worry. Um, someone, I, I, can't, I can't remember who it was, um, wrote me yesterday or the day before to say that they needed all new honey, coral, mustard. Oh. Um, so hopefully that's the same person who just missed it by an eighth hopefully. of an inch. Um, 
you know, and they didn't go through the whole thing, but uh, someone needs a whole section of it again. So that's you. Don't worry. We've got some more here and we can get it out to you. Um, um, but if it's just an eighth of an inch like that or a little wonky here and there, I would just push your seam over slightly um, when you're sewing that line together. And I'm going to bet in the end, once these all get trimmed up, you're not even going to notice. Some quilts don't call for trimming the half square triangles. Um, some quilts do. This one does. And you are going to hate it. <laughs> like, hate it. It might put you off quilting altogether. However, that's why I recommended getting the little ruler uh, and the uh, rotating cutting mat. I have inquired about getting 30 more kits. Uh, so we will put those up. I we got your emails for those wanting. I'd put together a, a kit with all the ruler sizes, Amanda. I don't know if you saw this last week. <laughs> all the ruler sizes, uh, including uh, even oh the 16 and a half by 16 and a half and a rotating mat so that people just to make the work of trimming all of those half square triangles somewhat more manageable and faster because it is hundreds of them and it is a lot of trimming but like amanda said the good news is if you have some of those little wonky edges it's going to square those right up so please do not throw your fabric away over a little miscut like that no way no yeah. way so i found the one comment this one's about washing their blue background with the white they did get a few spots so there was maybe a little bit of running so i guess still separate if you're oh for sure there. for sure i think you should separate your colors from your whites i just did it to see how it would go um i still think you should separate just in case, and it's for sure. it's fixable like if you have bleeding that's occurred if i throw it in my big soaker bathtub hot hot water blue dawn soak it it like i have blue dawn? yeah blue dawn fixes everything love it <laughs> <laughs> it's true it's true oh okay sarah um did you make the dark quilt no i haven't made the dark one yet i haven't made the dark one yet i really should um i am cutting along with you guys i'm further behind um because we're trying to get all this stuff out but i do have a kit that's open and ready to cut along with you guys so that one i will turn into the dark one um, because i am excited to see that one come together um in real life how often do you change your rotary blade? I feel like we have 25 rotary blades around here right now, and every single one sucks. That's <laughs> because like, they're not old. Uh, I changed, I just I changed my rotary blade at home. I don't do nearly the cutting you do. And that was after cutting probably for two quilts. Yeah, like it honestly, it really depends. If you, um, this has been my experience, if you are a very good cutter, and never whack that blade on the ruler or on the side of the table or never drop it on the floor or, you know, and you're just pristinely cutting, that thing will last you a long time. However, you can put a brand new blade in your knife and go like this and just hit the edge of it ever so slightly or go into your ruler just a little too hard on one side and then your blade even just gets a micro nick in it. And then every time you cut like one hair, just every single time that's what happened to mine yeah yeah um and so it becomes a matter of can you live with always going back and getting that one little hair i mean well and it's it's also like an arm issue if you're having to put a ton of weight on and you start to get sore you need a new blade yeah and they don't um, they don't have a time limit it's it's all on how it's working for you exactly I mean, I do think like Sarah's right. I've gone like months and months and months and months and months and never changed my blade. I've changed my blade after one day because it was just like, well, I shot that blade, you know, <laughs> because I just whacked it on something or it hit something metal or it, I went into my ruler um, and it just got a little nick in it somehow. And I dropped just one of those things all the time. Um, we in the next couple weeks because i did say in our last in the unboxing in case anyone wasn't um there for the unboxing um i've moved to kingston we haven't announced this yet i've only told you guys here um and so i'm in a brand new studio even though it looks the same in the background that's just because we moved all the stuff here <laughs> it's a little bigger on the sides um but yes i bought a quilt shop 
And upstairs of the shop is going to be the studio here where we work and film. And anyway, uh, a lot of all of the stuff that we were shipping out to you guys is still packed. So while I want to throw up on the site all the, the blades I know we have somewhere, um, we're just, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're just not quite there yet. Um, but if people are wanting new rotary blades and new things like that, we should just make it a priority because I don't want to leave you guys hanging, sure. especially when you're right in the middle of a big uh, cutting job. Do you so. want to tell them about Black Friday? Well, what should we tell? <laughs> well, that we were hoping to be able to to sell some of this, like bring yeah. our marketplace back up. To yes, speed. we did That's say all. Yeah. some people might recognize that our site's down a little because of all yes. this. Yes, we did say during the box opening that we would hold off on the marketplace until just before Black Friday, and then we would make uh, everything kind of available online, and we'd have some great deals. And that we would also hold back on the extra fabric that we had in all of the uh, ombre colors. We would not make those available to the public until we knew you guys were good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, there's some people I think that want to make bigger quilts. Yes. Or maybe want another kit. Yeah. And we want to give you guys the first rates. Uh, Amanda, behind the scenes here, is working on how much additional fabric you would need to add another row to the side and another row to the bottom. <laughs> because I know a lot of you were wanting to see how you could make this quilt larger. And we're not sure it's gonna take a full other kit. It might be close. Um, and so we'll put together that little bundle if people are wanting to make um, the extra 10 blocks that it will take to, um, you know, just add to the side and add to the bottom. So that's up to you guys if you feel like you need a, a larger uh, quilt. The finished size of this one is 64 by 80. So not, it's like a comfy double. Yeah, it's like not a quite a, it's yeah, a yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Um, next question. Uh, now that most of the pieces are cut out, are we supposed to sort them into pairs like background and colored or colored and colored, like the ones on pages four to seven? Right. The pattern book, do we follow that? Yeah, so in the next lesson, we are going to start to uh, match up. Um, like if you go ahead in your pattern here, um, we basically have done this very first uh, page three. But if you go to page four and you're ready to go ahead, this is what we're going to be working on. And it's matching up. And it, it, the fabric or the, um, the pattern is fairly straightforward. We're making half square triangles. You need to make 20 of them with off white and honey. Um, so that basically means make 10. So it's a little confusing where it says make a total of 20. So you're going to take 10 pieces of white and 10 pieces of honey and put that together to make 20 half square triangles because those are going to get cut in half, remember? So it's the white and the honey together that will make the 20. Um, it's not 20 honey and 20 white, then you'd end up with 40. <laughs> so you can go ahead if you are ready to move forward. Um, this will take a little while. And um, if people are ready, oh, I was like, I couldn't see mosquito. Um, if people are ready to move on to that part, hey, no problem. I mean, you know, if they just put the colors together and they didn't start like any cutting or any sewing or anything. Yeah, the and in video. the organizational templates, that's why you have the, all of those colors so that you know which color now is which. So that you, when you're starting to pull those off the piles, it's much easier than going like, is that coral? Or is, or is that honey or is that mustard? But you'll have them labeled with all of those. Uh, and we put the colors right on the actual organizational templates. In the video, I'm going to just warn you, in the video, I use the templates without the colors on them because I, I filmed that like a little while ago to get ahead. And since then, I thought I, I should improve those templates and I put the colors on them. So if you're watching the video and seeing me with all of the white little labels it's because i've improved them since we filmed the class so that's just a little behind the scenes um question about the dark um batting is does everybody get the dark batting that took the got the dark quilt and maybe you want to explain the dark batting just like yeah why it's Do you want so to grab cool some? oh yeah um it sounds perfect. Perfect. Okay. um so if you if you did the gray the, the nighttime you should have received black batting 
If you didn't, you can email us and we can switch it up for you. Um, um, because the black batting was in the second shipment that came. You know how we said a hundred or however many battings came, where's the rest? <laughs> because shipping is just like a nightmare these days. And they were like, oh, well, we didn't send it. <laughs> like, okay. Thank you. You know, it's just supply and demand. Like they could send out what they could. And anyway, the black batting was in the second round of shipping. We tried to hold back most of the gray um, kits until the black batting got here. So if accidentally one of uh, your gray kit had a white batting, um, it honestly, it doesn't matter that much, but we thought it'd be cool since it was the dark quilt, the dark, um, all the dark fabrics to use a black. And I don't know how familiar any of you are with, have you ever used black batting, Amanda? No, but it's cool. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they had it. I know. Until I ordered it. It's kind of one of those things that's like, oh, well, that's kind of different. And that's what I thought would be cool for you guys that took the risk to do the darker nighttime version um, is now, like, really, if any of it ever shows or puffs out or in the wash, you are totally good. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to stock this in the shop and online. Uh, we ordered extras, right, Sarah? Yeah. Yeah, so if anyone wants a, a roll of black batting, we'll get that up whenever we uh... get it up <laughs> <laughs> soon. <laughs> um, someone's saying, so if you messed up the cutting, now what? Asking for a friend. You've got many friends in this group asking the same question, my friend. So if you messed up the cutting, let's just take it back. Give us some more, some more details because we're all in the same boat here. There's plenty of people who've written in to ask for like all new fabric and they need all new fabric. So you're not alone. This is why we're in the group. If you've messed up, yeah, see, Annalise is saying, I must be that friend. <laughs> yeah, you're among, you're with your people. It's all good. Um, I do it too. We all, all do it. We all do it. Um, if you've messed up royally and you need more fabric, then just email us and we'll figure out how to get it to you. Um, it might, like, it's expensive fabric. I'm not going to lie. It's about five bucks a piece, like the, for the 10 inch piece. Um, so we can send you what you need. Or if you, if you've only messed up and you only need like another three inch strip, like we can figure out what that is. Um, but just let us know what you need. And we'll make sure that we can get that off to you. Or we can figure out, can you salvage it? Because maybe you think you've messed up the cutting, but you really only messed up like, you know, one of the strips. And maybe that's one of the ones where there's enough extras that you can get by. Um, so, And if yeah, you cut the us. whole thing like off by a half an inch or something, you can adjust the pattern. It just takes a little bit more figuring out because if you don't want to waste the fabric and you want to go for it like there are ways to get around that and then all of a sudden you have a, a throw like it's just a different mm -hmm. size quilt <laughs> like yeah for it's like sure a creative choice <laughs> yeah Bella's saying uh she has a fair bit of white fabric left over is that normal uh we did give you extra for sure Ooh. um I would keep that aside for now just in case um you eventually realize oh I actually didn't cut that out because sometimes that's happened to me where I'm like oh wow look at this and it's like oh I missed that whole section <laughs> you know so just keep it aside for now because we actually don't get to the white for a little especially the larger pieces of white like that go in between uh like on the ends of these smaller blocks here um so you've got let me bring it over we've got these blocks here that are uh, smaller stars, they've got big chunks of white um, flanking either side of them. Um, so that takes up quite a lot of the white. So, you know, just put it aside for now. And um, you may be someone who got a bit of extra. I know when we were packing up some of the white kits, some of the white came on bolts and there was two meters at the end of the bolt. And it's like, okay, are we gonna waste this two meters of perfectly good white fabric or could we send people another like uh you know two and a half or another what did they got three and a half mm -hmm. is that what it was three and a half you know from another bolt and split up the two sometimes we decided to split it up you got two and something else we made sure you got a little extra um just to make up for having your your fabric split but that's extra is good extra is all good 
Um, I know you talked about this previously, but um, pressing open seams versus to the side. Do you want to go over that again? Yeah. So the pattern calls for Amanda. What's your natural? Uh... I always go to the side, almost always. Almost because always. I'm lazy. It takes I know. Less time. And you know what? That was me too until the Lottie quilt along. Mm -hmm. And now the Lottie convinced me to always press open. So even though this pattern says press to the side, I in the video am suggesting we go rogue and we open the seams because I tried it going to the side the way she said. And I didn't love it, gotta say. I'm a so, big nester. So I like to the side, but. Open is so no, nice. And here's the thing. In this quilt, there is really no like big time. Well, I, I see what you mean by nesting. But there was no like where I was like, this has to be like nested. Well, I guess every quilt that has points has to be nested technically. You're right. Why did I? I don't know. I just, I was like adamant in the video that I was like, you've got to press them open. So I pressed mine open, even though the pattern said, but you can do what, do what you like. I found it a bit chunky in the middle. And when I pressed it open, it was lying a lot flatter for me. So yeah. Yeah. And you can twirl them. There's all these techniques. So when yes. they all meet in the middle, you can twirl them. So they lay even flatter. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What else we got, Sarah? There was some comment action going on. Yeah. <laughs> um... Oh, this is just um, some some advice from a few people. I find the block lock rulers great for squaring up um, half square half triangles. triangles. Yep. Um, somebody found a ruler for six ninety nine. That's good. Yep. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. What's that? Oh, yeah. Just out of curiosity, oh, why are you washing mm -hmm. the product beforehand? I normally do not. Amanda, do you want to take that one? It's just all personal preference. Like this is the debate that gets people like going. Um, mm -hmm. I pre-wash because I hate dealing with bleeding fabric, but also I don't like how the fabric feels all the time straight from the manufacturer. So I find, and I really like ironing fabric, just large pieces of fabric. I do not iron any clothes, but I enjoy so just zenning out and ironing fabric. So I pre-wash, love it. But you don't have yeah. to. That actually to. gets to another question somebody had where they had really deep creases in their fabric. You know what? That happened to me with the Lottie mm -hmm. and I really struggled to get them out, but I figured out how it worked for me. But for you, what do you recommend? For d super deep, deep creases? creases? I mean, wet it, yeah. wet it, like yeah. just water. Um, even, even wet the entire thing. To be honest, I've wet fabric before and not even put it in the dryer and just pressed it with the iron. It, it sounds so good. It's like, shh. It's good. Like you're yeah, really like just just like spraying it. I did still spray it, but as wet as could be. Yeah, just worked. just yeah. put it under the top, wring it out. Like, and then if it's still creased, water. I find that by the end, like when yeah. you put the ruler on, it folds flat, like it goes flat. And then by the time we're done, we've ironed it like twenty more times. It's fine. Yeah. Um. Someone's asking the size yeah. of the rotating cutting mat that uh, we're putting in the kit, and it's an eight incher. Um, but That's any cute. size rotating cutter cutting mat, um, this one has the little finger notches. That's what that is. So you don't have to kind of go like this. You can just spin it with your finger. Um, I can't take this one out of the package because there's so few of these. We have to make sure they all go out to people. And it's so nice that it's circled package. because the square ones, like you end up having it too close to the edge of the table and it hits you. Yeah. You hit it. The yep. Nice. yep. Circle is nice. Um, so yeah, eight inch is, or yeah, eight inch is the one that we're using there. But I also have like a very big, like, is it 14 over there or 12 inch one? Um, I only have one of these, but I'll show it to you because um, this is the big one. Can't even fit in the whole frame. Um, but yeah, there's the eight inch. So, um, this is the 12 inch. I think that's what it is. And, uh, yeah. And whatever size you have, the eight inch is perfect because, um, you'll trim up your big 16 and a half inch, uh, blocks just on your regular mat. Um, 
and this one fits both the little two and a half inch squares and the four and a half inch squares. So that's why we, uh, that's why I settled on this one. Um, have you heard of the half square triangle tool uh, where you actually trim the piece while it's still in the half square triangle before you iron it? No. Amanda, you? Maybe Chris can uh, yeah. explain a bit more. Yeah. Uh, there's so many different things. There's tons of half square triangle tools out there for sure. For sure. Um, Lots of people are talking about thangles. I know. Um, I know about Kathy that, but... posted that she was using thangles, which oh, we yeah. allowed the post to go up. Um, but probably you should have taken it down because it's just going to confuse people. The, the really advanced people will be like, oh, cool, a new technique. Those of you who are doing, you know, the quilt for the first time might be like, sorry, what? Do I need that? You know, it's another... It's another thing to help you, um, but we don't, we haven't tested it with this quilt. Um, a couple people are using dies and kind of struggling a little bit because we haven't tested it with this quilt and trying to get the exact number that you need. Um, what we've done in the class is what we know works for this quilt. You are welcome to use whatever tools you have. Um, I encourage you to do so. Um, just so long as you know how to use it and you know how to apply it to that pattern. And, you know, Kathy, who posted about the thingles, and I know Marie Agnes are both very experienced quilters. Um, they've, you know, tried everything they could be sitting right here teaching these classes for sure. With So um, it's not a requirement for this. And I would say get used to doing it the tried and true way especially if you're a beginner, because that's going to give you a foundation that you can then, like some of these other people in the group, then you can build off of. You can see the shortcut. You could see how a tool could help you because you've been there trimming, trimming, trimming. If you haven't been there, you're, you, maybe you don't quite know um, the foundations. You, does that make sense, Amanda? It does, because like sometimes you try out something new and it's like, oh, I just didn't have it pressed the right way and now I've ruined everything. Like it, there's all those things. And there's so many different things and really all we, we don't even need a lot of the stuff that we have that we're using <laughs> in the class. It's just like, I like to keep it simple because the, I don't have a lot of room in my studio. And if I can have more fabric or a tool, I'm going to choose more fabric every time <laughs> for sure and you know tools are fun because but you do need it's like if you were a carpenter and you started with like a lathe or like a something that was really difficult to you know when you know hammer nail saw you know then you start to get put some stuff together now we've got a bit of a foundation now we can maybe go to like a drill or you know a jigsaw or you know something uh, like a bandsaw something a little bit higher you don't start at the very very like laser cutter blah 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 you know um that that's my suggestion if if you can kind of follow along especially if you're new in doing it how the video um is saying which is the old school method now i am giving you lots of shortcuts in cutting in this old school way like layering up your fabric and cutting those layers on the fold um, that's going to make very quick work out of cutting your fabric. Um, however, if you watched, um, if you were new and watched the cutting basics video, I really do try to stress if you're new to rotary cutting, definitely you're going to want to practice this a little bit before you bring it to your nice, beautiful, I only have one piece fabric. So even if that means taking an old shirt or something that maybe your partner has that they've outgrown, or, you know, old kids clothes that they don't wear anymore, or a bed sheet that, you know, has seen better days, bring that to your cutting mat and just give it, like, pr try doing three inch strips across that old bed sheet and see what happens. Get all of your muscle memory and the repetitive motion um, out of your system on something like that before you bring your nice, beautiful fabric. And if you're not feeling super confident, don't layer it up. The layering it up is to make it faster and quicker, but it's harder to cut like that because it takes more muscle. You got to really, you know, push a little bit more. If you're more comfortable just doing it one at a time, slow and steady wins the race. Because trust me, I didn't always layer up all my fabric. This is where we're getting to. And I'm, I want to give you those explanations in the class to help it move along. 
And so that you learn like, hey, I didn't realize I could layer it up. That's so much faster. But if you're not there yet, take a few of those layers off or do them one at a time or start with one. Then you're like, you know what? I'm getting it. Then layer some up and keep going. It's definitely always a work in progress. It's always a, it's always a practice, right? Um, any idea how much the two and a half inch ruler and the 16 and a half inch rulers are? I think this was somewhere like around like 12, $13. I know when I looked up the six and a half, it was like $86. I'm like, <laughs> Like that's not what we were charging. That was like what it was on Amazon for. Okay. Um, we don't even have this up on its own. I just put them in a bundle because we got a you know fairly good deal for them, um, and I'm trying to get more in. So, yeah. Check back on the site. Yeah, we'll post in the group um, as soon as I hear back from where we got them from. Mm -hmm. um, if we can get, I asked for thirty more because um, the first ten or however many we had sold in less than six minutes. <laughs> So. <laughs> um, ruler carol and wondering about shipping to the u.s from our new location of course now i have to say janome has very specific rules about cross-border sewing machine shopping and the last time we had a sewing event janome did make a bunch of amazing deals available um uh, to the participants and then once we, you know, some people took advantage and got, you know, upgraded their machines, uh, which is great, but then went, oh yeah, we're not supposed to ship Canadian machines to the US and vice versa, because wherever you buy the machine, you're supposed to be able to get it serviced there. And the serial number has to be from the country that you bought it from so that the warranty is activated. So Genomi America did us the solid and they just shipped out the machines to the people in the event. Great. But now going forward, since I will be able to um, be a full Janome dealer and get you guys access to all kinds of great um, deals from Janome just myself um, and accessories and all those kinds of things, I can't send a Canadian machine to you guys who are in the US. However, Janome America is going to partner me up with someone in the US so that you can still buy them through me, you can still get recommendations or get a deal through the event. And then I will um, get connected with a dealer in the US who will ship it to you. We just haven't finalized all those details yet. But I will say, if you are looking to upgrade your machine, specifically to an M7, the Black Friday marketplace <laughs> might be for you. Um, they have rules about what you can post like the prices for and stuff like that. Um, but because this is a private event and, uh, we love it when people get a deal in these events because they're participants, if you're looking to upgrade and you have a machine in, in mind, then you should send us an email, uh, to info at homemade.ca. Um, somebody already messaged me about upgrading to an M7 and we were able to get them a deal that was like a few hundred dollars less than it's posted anywhere else. So. I'm always, I'm all for people getting uh, new machines, but I'm also all for using what you have. <laughs> Some one, uh, like any sewing machines better than no sewing machine. So when uh, you're ready, when you're ready. Next question was when you put the colors together, for example, honey to honey, should you pull one darker and one lighter when you're doing yeah. the Hasbro? So this is a great question. And Vanessa Christensen is going to come on and talk about this either next week or the week after uh, when we get to like pairing them up. Um, but it is a great question and it will repeat it a bunch of times. So what I tried to do in the ones that I've made is you can kind of see here what it looks like when you pair things up that are similar looking and when you pair things up that aren't so similar looking. And you can kind of see it in, in this too. If you, if you put too many that are too close to the same color, this is fairly close. You, you kind of run the risk of not having that cool stained glass look quite as much. If you like the real like distinction, then always try to pair up opposite colors. If you like it a little more subtle, go medium and medium. It's totally up to you. Um, but put them together and see how you like it. Um, I really liked going 
like opposite. I tried not to put anything together and like sometimes you get to the end and this is what's left. So you just kind of have to there's put a little bit. Of there's a little bit, but yeah. this would be an example of this is what I had to put but together. That blue star, like look just above it looks so nice. Yes, yeah. because look at like the, the variation in the colors here. You know what I mean? It's, it's light with dark. It's light with dark. Uh, it's light with dark. That's the intended effect. Yes, because from far away, okay, so if I'm bringing this up now on our front camera, from farther away, that light with dark is a little less noticeable that it's two pieces and a little more like, I can't quite tell how they did that. Right? It's beautiful. No, it's so beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, yeah beautiful. exactly. So I would go for putting um, the the lights and matching them up with the darker counterparts and not be afraid that it's looking too stark. Um, because in the moment it might look very stark because it's just the two, but once you get it all together like this and it's very deliberate where you put, you know, the green is here because it's gonna match up with this green over here. Everything is very deliberate, even though it, you can't quite tell what the, how it got there or what the pattern is. Um, there is a very, very deliberate reason why she's saying this has to go this way. And you do need to follow which side or which, which is up and which is down. And, and this is why, because this green is going to match up with this green. Like this is probably the evergreen and this is the mint. And it's just slightly off of one another. Know what I'm saying? Um, if you purchase two kits, is there a batting included in the second kit too? I, I guess if it's a full kit yeah. versus just the extension. If no, get you get, kit. when you buy a kit, you get another batting. Um, so if you don't have any batting yet, it's because the batting's coming. Um, but yes, you do get a full other batting. And most of our stuff is pretty close to ready to all be sent out, right? Like yeah. The only some thing. Some people asking about white and. Yeah. Different. The white all went out today. Okay. Um, we are waiting on the last, we had to order more teal background. So many people wrote us back and said, I really want teal. Can I get some teal? So we've ordered another 24 meters. I think that doesn't seem like enough now at the time, like at the time when it was like coming to 700 bucks on the, <laughs> I was like, okay, I think that's all we can order. Um, but if you want more, I can order more. So if people are saying, I know already, I want another kit please let us know early or earlier rather than later because we still have the yardage right now and I can still bring in um, more of the teal or more of the onyx or more of whatever. So definitely send us an, an email um, if you're looking for more yardage or if you're wanting to just get, you know, teal background or another background for another quilt even, the, the 108 inch wide. Um, there is a question. I don't know, Amanda, if you can do this or not, but um, are you able to demonstrate how to twirl the points? I don't know if you have your stuff there with you. I don't Maybe have it right now, but I will do a video when we yeah. get to the video. Yeah, we could do that next week for sure. Or even a different live is, if she can, yeah. Yeah, we could do that for sure. Amanda, do you want to do that next week? Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when is starch used? Actually, you know what? I'm just going to also add on to this. A few people have been asking about whether starch cane. Can you just clarify that it's a spray adhesive, not starch? Yeah. Okay. A couple of people have asked, is that starch? Do not spray that on your fabric yet. That's spray adhesive. That's like, like literally squirting uh, glue on your quilt. <laughs> don't do it. Which we will do later uh, after we've already done it all. Mm -hmm. um, but that's spray adhesive and that's going to stick this to the batting and then the batting and this to the backing. Mm -hmm. So that we're gonna baste it. We're gonna hold it all together with that spray adhesive. Sometimes it, you would use pins to hold it all together. That's not what we're doing this time. We are spray basting it. Um, the starch, there's no starch in your kit. Um, you can use water or you can use spray starch or you can use, uh, we have sent in the past flatter which is a product that we love around here, which is technically not a spray starch. It doesn't have the same kinds of ingredients, but it does a similar job where you spray it on and then you iron. Um, but you can get a lot of um, your deep wrinkles out with, with water. Um, but flatter, we, we were loving flatter last quilt along, eh? Mm -hmm. It just um, and smells so good. It does. Oh, so There's good. so many good scents. Although I always got scentless. <laughs> oh, I love the scent. You love the scent? Yeah. I'm always like afraid of scents. 
I'm always like, hmm, I can you smell no something. Sense. I'm like, yeah, I have no sense. I can, I'm afraid of scent. <laughs> Burn. <Yeah>. I know. <laughs> um, it, we have a case or more of flatter in a bunch of different scents somewhere. Yeah, somebody from Kingston posted saying, I can't find any um, flatter in Kingston. I was like, ah, Jen, do we have any flatter in this place? <laughs> like, we're right here in Kingston. I just want to say. by the shop and we'll give it to yeah, them. Yeah, a woman mm. named Lisa stopped by today. Oh, yeah, to it was awesome. pick up a kit. And she was so nice. And I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> She's like, this place is in ruins. No. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, she was very nice. And I thought, this is so great. This is why, like, moving up, onward and upward, you know, is so great because people can stop in people can come and pick up some more fabric if they're you know close by she lived about an hour away and was coming through anyway and so i just thought even though we're not even close to ready to open it's like a complete construction zone downstairs she, i still totally showed her around like it was open <laughs> and she's like that's a painter and that's a drywaller and i was like i know <laughs> yeah, we're all part of the family now yeah yeah she was she was great but it did make me think like, yay, sometime in the not so uh, distant future, we'll be able to have like our friends over. Well, we really do have a good community when we're in these groups. It's yeah. Like we see repeat names. Even if you're only in one of the groups, we start to see your name keep coming up. So it feels like we oh, know yes, them. Yeah. Hi, yeah, great. for sure. Glad for to sure. see you. Um, okay. We have another one, which yeah. might have already been answered, but um, when you cut, how important is it to separate the light from the dark? Like, do you need to separate them at that time or can you keep just those colors together, those colors? Um, what I did was just kind of pick them up as I cut them. And so then they kind of stayed in their ombre and then went back down. And then as I pulled, uh, I actually did split then the pile in two and kind of shuffled it. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that I was pulling lighter and darkers from different color patches together. They weren't, I wasn't just pulling whatever came off the pile and, and putting it together. I was pretty deliberate about taking this lighter one and this darker one and putting them together. I think Vanessa, when she's on, can kind of give um, some of her insight to us, Amanda. Um, but I know when we spoke to her before, she said, just have fun with it. You know, it's, it's not the end of the world if a super dark matches a super dark. Um, all good. Um, the finished size of the ha half square triangle is 2.5 by 2.5, correct? Uh, the size, it's not the finished size. Like on the quilt, it's like, um, it's two inches by two inches on the quilt. So it's two and a half by two and a half before it gets all sewn together. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So when you are making your squares, you're going from three down to two and a half when you're trimming the half square triangles. And then down, once it's in this, it only looks like it's a one and, or it's a two inch block. Yeah, because yeah. you're down on your seams. Because you're down on your seams, yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you, rather than drawing lines on fabric, have you seen the diagonal seam tape um, from Cluck Cluck Soul? Yeah, do you like that, Amanda? I just use washi tape. You don't need yeah. anything fancy. And I just lay down washi tape on my needle plate and use that. Works perfect. Yeah. It is very time consuming to put the pencil line on every single one. Um, but if you are not confident in sewing straight, you might need that pencil line. And by the halfway point, you might not need it anymore um, because you might have done it enough times that your skills are getting more advanced um so if you're new to it i would stick with the pencil line because it's going to help you uh you're going to be annoyed by oh god i have to keep doing this <laughs> yes just put on netflix and just keep on going <laughs> this is what we all do audiobook podcast netflix like gilmore girls constantly you know um and mark them all up but yeah if there will be other tricks that I, you know, I was like, I should have meant a stamp. And then, you know, it's a fabric marker. I know, don't tell anyone. I was like, I should do that. That I'm always trying to think of products that will like solve problems. Like this will help. Um, but the bottom line is if you want it to turn out, you got to put in the work. That's the bottom line. If you try to shortcut it too much, you know what happens. 
you know what happens. It's funny that you say that. I was just reading one of the questions. This is from Chris. I am only cutting one piece at a time. I don't want to ruin it. It is too pretty. Put it up. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what I did with my Lottie last year. I tried with the double, like Jen was saying. Nope. This isn't working. I'm going single piece. <laughs> yeah. And get you. Yeah, exactly. You know whether or not it's working or not working. And you can make your own adjustments as you go. And that's a good one. Take a few layers off if it's not working. You don't have to do it just like that, for sure. For me, it's the process. I just, like, it's a, quilting is slow to begin with. And I just mm -hmm. enjoy every step, except for, like, basting. And then I just, I, I do it one at a time because that's how I like to do it. It's not always I mean, in the shortcuts. No, it, it's not. And, you know, I think at the beginning, it kind of was for me, like I was just having this conversation about um, doing the binding and whether you should hand stitch it at the end or whether <laughs> you should just machine stitch it. And I was always a very big proponent of machine stitching it. Cause I was like, I don't got time to be hand stitching, no binding. I got work to do, let's go. And I would, and then, I hand stitched one and I, because I was giving it as a gift and I thought, okay, I'm going to, and I had a big long car trip and I thought, okay, I'm going to hand do it. And I have not gone back to machine stitching it because it just, I was like this for me, it was no big deal to do it. It actually was much faster to hand stitch it than I thought it was going to be. Obviously not as fast as machine stitching it, but I also got to sew in the car then, which actually kind of made me happy. <laughs> And I got to sew like at the rink and I got to sew like in places because I was constantly bringing it with me to keep working on it. And so I liked that. I liked that part of it. And then I ended up with a, my final thing that I loved even more. So at first I was always looking for the fastest and the most blah, blah, blah. And now I've sort of gone back and been like, you know what? I'm good. Slow and steady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, can you tell them what method you use for your, um, half square triangles? Um, so the method that I used, um, is just the straight up cut the three inches, three inch squares and put them together. I drew the line and then I sewed a quarter inch on one side of the line. And then I sewed a quarter inch on the other side of the line. And I will show you how I did that. I believe in video three, Karen, video three where I'm sewing. I think so. Yeah, we think. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like part of me thinks like we have some of these videos, we could, you know, release them ahead if people really wanted to like get to it. Um, but then we kind of lose a bit. So, you know, if you're really dying, I think if you're, if you're already done and ready, you probably know what you're doing and you might not need it quite as much. Um, but if you're dying to see the video, just to be sure, like, I'm sure we could shoot you a link. Yeah. Um, this question has been answered, but I think we should probably say it again because yeah, put it it's up. a little convoluted. Um, when you're making 20 of say the white and the honey, does that mean 20 squares into 40 or 10 into 20? So 10 into 20. Yeah. 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 So it means you need a total of 20 half square triangles. So that means you're going to take 10 white or whatever color and 10 of your other color. You're going to put them together. So, so cut and then they come apart to make new squares that are all the same <laughs> right following me yeah. and then you have 20 by taking 10 and taking 10 and then you have 20 and that's why you know watching the video is good too especially if you're new because just looking at this um it's not totally obvious what you should what you should use here especially if you haven't done it before um but when you take each side and you cut it together, that's how you get 20. So you're starting with 10, 10 off-white, 10 honey, put them together, uh, and it makes 20. 10 of each, 10 of each into 20. Yeah, each color. <sighs> how are we doing for questions? I, I feel like I've been talking forever. Um, I guess if anybody wants to add some more in there, we are caught up. I can get you at the bottom. Um, I saw some someone talking about the pool noodle method, which I love. For oh oh color. yes, where you where you wind your whole. I like that too, actually, because I can I'm do it on like, like my my table back here. I can do it on that and not be 
crawling on the floor with the husky. The husky does yes. not help. Yes, with the with the hair of the husky. Oh. Karen's just reminding everybody that really go at your own pace. Don't be mm -hmm. intimidated if people are like, and I finished the whole quilt. And you're like, well, I haven't even put a rotary cutter to mat yet. I know. Like, <laughs> and so wash my fabric. Yeah. And sometimes like when you're in this group, you're seeing them all come up like day two, like, what the heck? I haven't even gotten my white in the mail yet. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Um We've got lots of time. We've got lots of time. We roll these out over the next eight weeks, but you've got people just finished their last year's quilt. It's okay. People usually do like a quilt like once a year or, or never, right? Yeah. It's amazing that you're even doing this. You know, you're literally creating an heirloom. Um, and anybody that you tell, hey, I'm making a quilt, will go, whoa, really? That's awesome. So be proud that you're in this, that you're doing it. And it doesn't matter how long it takes, you know? I have quilts that I started like six years ago. It's yeah. Fine. Same. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Kathleen, what's Kathleen asking? That was um, when you pair a color, I'll bring it up. When you pair a color with a background, is there a preference to pair the uh, black, I'm guessing, with a light or dark version on the other color or just keep it mixed? Okay. Yeah, I think that's what we were, we were talking about earlier to go ahead and try if you can. You'll get more of that stained glass effect if you um, put sort of like the lights and the darks together and the medium and the darks together or the medium and the lights together versus dark, dark, medium, medium, light, light. You know what I mean? I would try to mix them up and you'll get more of a, a stained glass look. And we had kind of given the example of this block here being more of an example of like the medium tones or all the dark tones going together. And then this um, here being more of an example of mixing it up. And this look here, I think is more of what we're going for with the stargazer and the ombre, because you can't quite tell what shape this was or is and which is attached to which because of that ombre fabric really makes it um, so unique. So yeah, I, I would mix them up. I would mix them up. Um, Danielle was just asking if you can share the pool noodle step um, when we get to the basting step. Absolutely. The basting video for us has already been done um, because I are, have already made it um, on the video, but um, we can definitely do it in the live for sure. For uh, sure. This has been a question I actually noticed on our other quilting page and some of our other pages. Do we have access to the class videos forever or for how long? Originally, it was only supposed to be a year, but I know. we are about two <laughs> years past our initial event. So I'm not sure whether we need to clean house or whether people just want them up for eternity. I mean, we, we always say as a general rule of thumb that you have one year to access the, the videos. Um, and then we archive, you can still go into the Facebook group, but we'll archive it. So you're not like still getting people posting after a year. Um, it's also a lot for us to manage to go back like more than a year to answer questions about like, Oh yeah, that project that happened like way a long time ago. However, I don't mind really. You can post in the, in the regular group too. I'll answer it. It's just hard for us to always go. Them. You can't find them. That's the problem because they get, really they get buried. buried. Yeah. Um, so everyone has a year. That's what we say. But many people have written to say, I'm not quite done my Lottie. Please let me keep the video for longer. Yeah, no problem. It's fine. It's fine. We're not like erasing all that content. No. Oh, gosh, no. In fact, I was sort of thinking like, gosh, we should just put together another Lottie kit with different fabric and then re-release the videos. And you know, so what if, if the fabric in the video is different? Um, just put together another bundle and give everybody new templates and do a whole other uh, Lottie quilt along. And um, yeah, anyway. The YouTube videos would be the same. Yeah. 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 Um, how will we be quilting this huge quilt? Yeah. How will we? Did we send tables to everybody? No long ones? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone uh -huh. get the long arm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Send it all back to us. We'll, we'll do it for you. Um, so I, so I am going to be totally honest. I haven't filmed the quilting of this yet. I haven't. The quilting is coming and Amanda, maybe we can talk about it even while we're live here mm -hmm. because I kind of feel like I don't want to take anything away from the stars. So 
part of me was kind of thinking that it might be cool to do something like just in the whites, like, okay, here's a try or like just brought my lines around, like, you know what I mean? Like somewhere yeah. around just these, um, and leave and then stitch in the ditch around the stars. So they kind of puff out and that the quilting is all done in the white or in the background. What do you think about that? Yeah, you're definitely the big stars are going to have to go up the middle because it, they're too big for the batting. You have to have your stitches so close together, like a certain distance. Um, but yeah, I love the echoing of the points on the star. Um, there's so many options here. Like if you just want the pattern to shine, you can just do straight line quilting. I find it kind of melts into the background and lets everything kind of come out at you because you're not fighting, your eye's not fighting with it. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I really, I used to do a lot more is just like that V shape, but put it on a larger scale and in sections all over. And then it, it just kind of mimics it, but it still kind of fades into the background. There yeah. are a lot of options. I think stitching in the ditch gets a little bit tricky because it it seems like it's such an easy skill, but one stray stitch you really see. So it's especially it's if you're if you're like going all along this white here, and then a little bit it goes over onto yeah. the blue. Like yeah, it really looks like a mistake. And yeah. we don't want to be picking out our quilting for sure, for sure. Well, and then um, you have to remember when you wash it and it fluffs up, a lot of those mistakes you don't see anymore. So don't true. sweat it. Yeah. Remember the old adage in quilting is if you can't see it from a moving horse, it's not an error. I don't it's know. A design who choice. That. I know. <laughs> I don't know who <laughs> came up with that, but it was definitely from like the 1800s. <laughs> Um, there was a question here. I heard about three yard quilts. Will you ever do that? And can you talk about batiks? Oh, batiks. Batiks. Why are they not so good? I don't know if you want to say anything about Well, I mean, I don't know about three yard quilts. Vanda, do you know what these are? There was a whole bunch of patterns, I think, that were based in just three yards. It made a whole quilt, but I don't oh. know anything past that. I don't know anything about them either. Batiks. Why are they not good? Well, because they're so ugly. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Jen's what? just like putting it out there. What? I do actual? not. I do not. I am not a fan. Is she paying me to be PR tonight. Batiks. That doesn't mean you can't like them. I am not a fan. In fact, we've had many sales reps from many fabric companies come to visit us here at the shop to say, <laughs> hello, we'd like to introduce you to our line of batiks. And I'm like, go. We will not have batik. <laughs> and they're like, okay, geez, sorry. Lots of people they're, like them. They and do. I'm like, la, 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 la. <laughs> they're really popular and they, they're, are. they aren't bad. There are good quality not boutiques. Bad. There's bad quality boutiques. You just need to know what you're buying. But yeah, they're definitely not my thing at all. So it's not that the fabric's so, bad. But it's no. the design. So and let it, let's clear. just say if people don't know what we're talking about boutiques, um, so you'll see on this fabric, you can see there's a right side and a wrong side. Batiks are dyed in a way that there's no right or wrong side. You can use either side of the fabric and they always look sort of like watercolored or like, you know, splooshy and splashy. And, you know, they're off, they're often very, very vibrant colors, which you'd think I would like, but I don't, <laughs> I don't know why, even though I love this, this does not scream batik to me. Um, so I think it's, it's, again, it's personal pe preference. You know what I mean? Batiks aren't bad. Um, in fact, there's some people that just swear only by batiks. So if you like them, use them. Yeah. I hate them. So they're not coming here. Yeah. Unless everybody that comes in asks for them, then I'll order them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we do have to pay the want. light bill. So yeah. <laughs> Moving away from this question, yeah. um, can you use a G foot to stitch in the ditch? Like the blind hem foot? Mm. Um, I have. <laughs> you can use, if it works, it works. It but does work. Don't uh, you let have, people tell you you can't do it. I've done it many times, actually. I think the stitch in the ditch foot is actually the o, o foot. No, O foot is quilting foot. I just in the ditch, I'm or blind hem, I'm pretty sure is G. 
And it looks a lot like the stitch in the ditch yeah. foot because of the. That's the G mm -hmm. foot. G. That's a blind it's pattern. It's got right? that little. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have um, all my feet here. Because you can put that little um, black gate right down into the ditch. And as long as you've got it just on a straight stitch, you know, you're almost right there. So I have many times because I'm always like, I can't find any of my feet. We got an answer about the three yard quilts are small quilts that you make with three yards and are very easy patterns. So that answers that a little bit. We only like very hard patterns. <laughs> oh, well, if we do that one quilt we've been eyeing. Oh my gosh, we are dying. Don't to... tell them, but there is a quilt that we love and we keep going back to, I mean, oh. I we hope we've made enough of you we, experts that we you can want do this maybe next year. <laughs> well, it's out this year. People are, it's going to be old news by next year it if we don't launch it. it. We just it, need to run one it. quilt along into the next, into the next. Like it should be a year round thing, Jen. <laughs> I know. But you know what? We've got a lot of new, put your hands yeah. up here. If you are very first, this is your very first quilting event because we put a poll in the group. And 50% of the people were new. Mm -hmm. And so that made me think, oh, we lost 50% of the people. <laughs> That's not good. What do we do? But I also think because they're not done yet and they couldn't, you know, take on another quilt when they're not mm -hmm. done their first quilt. You know, that's how I have to justify things too. Like it's expensive, you know? And so then we're like, well, should we do more than one quilt along? Because I would literally do them all the time. And maybe the answer is yes. And people just come when they come. And, you know, there's maybe a, maybe there's a smaller group more often. Or people just show up when they show up. Um, but, yeah, we're getting lots of first timers here. And, you know, we want to make sure that they're having, like, a great experience and we're not overloading. And that um, we really are taking the time to explain and answer all the questions and not just get on to the next really you know enjoy this process and and don't feel bad if it takes you the full year to do it i literally finished yeah. my lottie just like a week ago maybe some people commented i posted um and yeah like i could only tease out an hour here a and week there sometimes yeah i have small kids i could only do it after they go to bed or their fingers will be under the needles it's like you do what you can. Yeah. yeah. And I, I do think once the uh, shop opens downstairs, we are going to pick some of our favorite quilt patterns and just flat out make them into a kit mm -hmm. and make them available without all of the hoopla, without all of the, you know, although that maybe is what people like. <laughs> yeah. If people, what I wonder is if people like themed oh. quilts, like oh. the themed fabric, like the Christmas quilt versus like a non-themed, you know, it's so hard to know what everybody yeah. likes. I think, you know, there's certain people that just pick up a quilt kit, but then never make it. But then there's certain people that might do this because every week we're coming back and you have a reason to keep going and you can, you know, so. Yeah. My friend yeah. Colleen just joined in last night. And she Aww. was like, I need something that's for me that I have to sit down to do every week because we don't often give ourselves permission to do something we enjoy when life gets busy. Yeah. And it, it does become a little bit like your, it doesn't have to be favorite, but like favorite TV show where you sit down Mondays at seven and you watch yeah. it like the old days, you know what I mean? Where it was only on at that time. So you exactly. carved out, you know, I must watch like. The Cosby show at this time or like whatever show I hate to even mention that now but that's the only show I can remember from childhood always wanting to watch on you know that got dark <laughs> <laughs> so many shows out there Jen like Gilmore Girls it I can't think of any other one like I can only so think of the Cosby many. show <laughs> <laughs> only one I can think of a movie produced by Harvey Weinstein like, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah what other what other <laughs> Anybody oh, want to talk about Kevin oh, Spacey? Or? Yeah. Oh. Not brand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else can we, how, how, how more awkward could I make this? <laughs> All right. Maybe we should wrap it up. Okay. It's put, a sign that we need to wrap it yes. up. Yes. Um, I'm loving seeing that there's so many first timers here. So please don't mm -hmm. be shy in asking your questions um, and getting what you need out of this experience. And it's no race. Don't worry. We're leaving the, the, um, the Lottie quilt videos up. Not to worry. Um, I appreciate you all like being patient at the beginning while we got our technology straight. Who knows what happened there? 
Um, so Friday uh, will be class two, and then we'll meet you back here next Monday, same time, 7 p.m., and we're going to go over the sorting and the half square triangles. All right. All right. Thanks for being here, Amanda. No problem. Always great. All right. We'll see everybody next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.